G'day fellow hell divers, Shell Strike here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. So if you're going to be diving into the chaos of Hell Divers 2 and you're aiming to tackle those higher difficulty levels, well, you're in the right place because today we're going to be dropping 43 advanced tips that'll turn you into a democracy spreading machine. <laughs> so suit up and let's dive in. Before I do start though, remember these tips may be subject to change over time due to future Hell Divers 2 patches. Okay, tip number one, radar station. So you should be prioritizing radar stations as they reveal the map. Crucial for strategic gameplay. They're the tallest structures with a distinct minimap icon. Okay, Hulk takedowns. Tip number two. When lacking heavy weaponry against Hulks, toss thermite grenades to stick to the Hulk and watch the fireworks happen. Tip number three. Combat priorities. Against Terminids, you should be taking out uh, them in a particular order. Taking out Alpha Commanders, then Hunters and Chargers. Bowl Titans and Brood Commanders last in that particular order. For Automatons, prioritize Hulks due to their lethality. Then Rocket Devastators, adjusting based on your cover. Okay, now on to tip number four, Stims and Survival. Are you under the influence of Stims? Well, if you are, then you're nearly invulnerable. You're able to withstand a charge's onslaught or even heavy gunfire. But this does exclude insta-kill scenarios. Okay, tip number five. Stealth in Helldivers 2 is a very real mechanic. You should be understanding patrol routes and that will allow for stealthy navigation. Use stratagems or grenades to create distractions on the way. Okay, tip number six. Suppressive fire. Firing on automatons disrupts their aim, making their rockets less accurate. Automatons are very vulnerable to suppressive fire. Okay, tip number seven, artillery management. Remember, SEAF artillery fires in the order that you load them. Also, another tip is to juggle shells by dropping and quickly picking them up while sprinting to manage the timing. This will then get them to the loading area much faster. Okay, tip number eight, strategic drop pod use. You should be using drop pods not just for transportation, but as a weapon as well. Aim for the head of a Bull Titan or the heat sinks on tanks for insta-kills. Or in fact, any uh, enemy that you can. Probably not a good idea to do it on a small, small uh, enemy. Probably medium to heavy is the best, so you make the best use of it. Extraction zone tactics, tip number nine. So triggering extraction and when the countdown hits zero, as soon as you hear Pelican 1 arriving, will allow you to step out of the extraction zone, keeping the Pelican hovering and engaging enemies from afar. Very handy in solo missions. Tip number 10, explosive defense. As I have demonstrated in a recent video on Eagle airstrikes, lying prone will grant you a 75% increase in explosive resistance. But sprinting does exactly the opposite, so you should hit the deck when explosions are imminent and you will have a much higher survival rate. Tip number 11, nests and fabricator strategy. So this is one strategy you can use if you like. Avoid clearing bug nests or automaton fabricators unless you're wanting more of a challenge obviously or XP or you're actually in a blitz mission. Tip number 12, sample safety. Drop your samples near the extraction point, even if you die, they're safe for retrieval. This is a very common tactic used by a lot of hell divers. Tip number 13, opening containers. Explosives, AMR, arc thrower, or the slugger can all open those stubborn containers. All right, tip number 14, artillery deployment. Collect all five shells before you activate the terminal on the SEAF. Uh, objective to prevent attracting enemies prematurely. A lot of times I see team members activating the terminal before they have been collected and bang a horde is upon you. Tip number 15 weapons utility. Remember a couple of shots or a single shot from a lot of the stratagem weapons can actually destroy fabricators or bug holes if aimed correctly. You don't have to throw grenades down the uh, vents. Tip number 16 stun or thermite. So the stun or the thermite are about the best two grenades in the game, in my opinion. You must decide whether you want to stun an enemy in place and use another weapon to take it out, or if you want to take out a heavy such as a Hulk, take, tank or bile titan using the thermite grenade. Tip number 17, hell bomb tactics. Use old hell bombs against clustered enemies like groups of charges or bolt titans due to the large blast radius, a very common tactic indeed. Tip number 18, injury effects. Remember, arm injuries degrade your aim with the right arm affecting grenade tosses and strategy use. Leg injuries hamper movement and sprinting. 
while chest injuries lead to bleed out unless a stim is used. So if you've got any of those injuries and you don't have a stim, you'll probably want to get one as fast as you can. Okay, now on to tip number 19, understanding patrols. So patrol spawns increase with objective completions and nest clearings, but not by time. You should study the heat generation map online for deeper insights. There are a whole bunch of videos dedicated to this subject, which you can just search and uh, check out. Yeah, I highly recommend you find out about how the heat map works. Okay, tip number 20, the extraction myth. You don't need to extract to win or earn rewards except for samples. Solo extractions do pin you down, but if you let the timer run out, extractions will happen automatically. So just wait till the end and you'll get out of there. Tip number 21, remote demolition. Use just about any stratagem weapon safely to destroy illegal broadcasts from a distance without engaging a terminal, even impact grenades. Okay, on to tip number 22, rocket pods versus armor. While mediocre against bugs, 110mm rocket pods can obliterate tanks and towers, simplifying objectives against the automatons. Tip number 23, AMR precision. The anti-material rifle can take down a hulk in two shots. Its snowscape accuracy is surprisingly good, especially with the external crosshair. Tip number 24, orbital rail cannon precision. A rail cannon can devastate all enemies in Helldivers 2 with one shot since the last major patch. It's unlimited and has fast cooldown, making it essential for high levels. Okay, tip number 25, Eagle Airstrikes. When using Eagle Airstrikes, remember they fly perpendicular to where you're facing. So if you're looking north uh, and you put out an Eagle Airstrike, expect to strike from east to west, never from north to south. Okay, tip number 26, enemy tracking. Remember, enemies don't have a magical GPS on you. If you duck behind cover like hills or trees or veer off to one side, they will lose track of you. But if you keep running straight and you just, you'll just keep getting spotted. Tip number 27, railgun. For all those railgun users, switch to unsafe mode. Here's a pro tip. At about 90% charge, indicated by the very subtle sound and a red marker, it's at peak damage, so get familiar with that sound. Tip number 28, reinforcements. When facing automatons, watch out for the smaller units. They're the ones calling for backup. Uh, you'll want to avoid a full-blown skirmish, so take those little guys out first. Tip number 29, causing damage. It can be kind of tricky to tell if you're actually causing damage to an enemy sometimes, but a big giveaway is when you land a solid hit on something like a Hulk, you'll see red sparks if you're doing damage, but if not, you'll see nothing or you might see blue blue sparks okay tip number 30 spore spewers and detector towers so spore spewers have mutated in helldivers 2 over the last few patches and they are much denser than they used to be so you should blast away with anti-structure weapons as a few grenades will no longer work um, and also those annoying detector towers from the automaton crew a single 500 kilo bomb does the trick and the following weapons will as well. 120mm artillery barrage, 380mm artillery, precision strike, orbital laser and orbital rail cannon to take out the uh, detector towers. Very annoying they are. Alright, tip number 31, reloading your weapon. You should be getting into the habit of reloading your gun before it hits zero. Uh, you may waste a tiny bit of ammo, but it is definitely quicker than waiting for that empty annoying click. <laughs> okay, tip number 32, shrieker avoidance. So shriekers can't actually touch you if you're lying on your belly or sprinting fully uh, away from them. Same goes for those Tesla towers. So you should lie flat beneath them and there's a high probability that they won't be able to touch you and the Tesla tower won't be able to zap you. Tip number 33, smoke is your friend. Smoke can confuse enemies. They'll keep firing at your last known position, giving you a good chance to reposition. Tip number 34, the good old Bowl Titan dance. <laughs> so you should be engaging a Bowl Titan closely to make it pause and it will attempt to stomp you or Bowl Spew you, which you can dodge, buying time for heavy ordnance deployment. Tip number 35, enemy reinforcements. There's a cooldown on enemy reinforcements. So when you first engage, they'll call in for help. 
but then there's a delay before they can do it again so that comes in handy tip number 36 retreating my go-to strategy for solo missions in hell divers is retreat 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 keep distance from the bugs and always fall back from a heavy automaton assault Tip number 37, first person aiming or ADS. Switching to first person reduces recoil significantly, enhancing your shooting accuracy. Also, you should be adjusting your weapons modes as needed, such as changing to semi-auto or fully auto, or adjusting the range if these the weapons you are using have the options. They uh, will help you uh, greatly in uh, completing your missions. Tip number 38, the arc thrower. So there's no need for a full charge um, every time for the arc thrower. It, if you hit it at about 60%, then you're good to go for rapid shots. Perfect for clearing out clusters fast. Okay, tip number 39, this is for charges. So when you're facing charges, don't back off, charge at them. <laughs> Circle, strafe, and you'll dodge their attacks while getting in your shots. This may be a little bit harder since the last patch. As they're a little bit faster now but um, you should still be able to perform that tactic tip number 40 getting swarm so if you've got too many bugs or bots on your tail just bolt put enough ground between you and the swarm and they'll vanish leaving your objective wide open tip number 41 the personal shield generator pack is amazing yep the shield generator pack will absorb one big hit like surviving an eagle airstrike or even a 500 kilo bomb if it comes to that so just make sure you're lying down and facing in the general direction yeah very handy the personal shield generator pack tip number 42 reload shortcut so for those using shell loading shotguns like the punisher or slugger you've got what practically is infinite ammo reload after each shot and you'll never run out until you have to get another ammo pack <laughs> so not really infinite ammo but um yeah very handy that Okay, lastly, we have tip number 43, which is diving is your best friend. So yeah, diving isn't just for show. It throws off automatons aim. You can dodge hunters and missiles, extinguish fires, and when things get too hot, just keep diving. So there you have it. By now, you should be well equipped to handle the toughest missions in Helldivers 2. Remember, each mission is a test of strategy, teamwork, and sometimes sheer will. If you found these tips helpful, smash that like button, subscribe for more Helldivers 2 content, and hit the bell to get notified when I drop new strategies. Drop your own high-level tips in the comments below or share your epic moments. Until next time, keep spreading democracy one planet at a time. This is Shellstrike, Helldivers out.